What's up, internet friends? I've been busy, let's talk hardware. But before we do, if you're new to the project, let me bring you up to speed. PyKiln is an open source, web-based kiln controller that runs on an ESP32 running MicroPython. You can easily create firing schedules and monitor your kiln remotely through a web browser. It will email you when your firing schedule is finished or if there's an error with your kiln. Okay. After chatting with Corey, I took his advice and I switched the breakout board to use I2C. I2C is a communication protocol that allows you to talk to all sorts of devices and sensors, and you only need four wires. Because of that, I switched back to using an ethernet cable to connect the two circuit boards together. Cat5 cable has eight wires inside of it, so I used two for five volts and another two for ground. That way, I could give the circuit board plenty of power. And then I used two wires for the I2C connection uh, so that I could talk to the temperature sensors and the GPIO expander. And I used one wire for the ESP32 to directly control the contactor. And the last wire I left unused, but I broke out the connection and labeled it P8 on both PCBs. I figured I might use have a use for it in the future. Uh, I have the ESP32 directly controlling the contactor with a GPIO pin. That way, if there is an, any issue with the I2C connection, I can still shut the kiln off. I tested a variety of I2C frequencies and Cat5 cable lengths, and at 10 kilohertz, I could communicate fine with an 80 foot long cable. That said, I would advise using a shorter cable, but it's nice to know if you need to mount the ESP32 closer to a Wi-Fi access point, you can. Okay, now that we've talked I2C, let's take a look at the latest version of the PCBs and how everything is coming together. All right, everyone, let's take a look at the updated circuit boards. So this is the main circuit board and here's the ESP32, and it just slides in like this. Let's see if I can line it up. There we go. And uh, it's really handy. You can pop it in and out, uh, reprogram it. Um, and then underneath it is a slot for a micro SD card. And that stores all of your firing schedules and um, the logging um, to see how your kiln is doing. And then um, let's just keep traveling around. We've got a optional external LED, uh, so it will use the internal uh, LED on the uh, ESP32, um, but you could wire up an external one if you wanted. And then we have a headphone jack, and this connects to a non-invasive um, current sensor. So that would go around um, the wire that goes to your kiln uh, that supplies power. Um, and so that would measure how much power your kiln is using. And then if we keep going around, we've got a uh, ethernet jack. And so this, this is kind of interesting. I've got a uh, logic level converter inside of there um, on, along the side of the circuit board. And that uh, makes it so that the breakout um, circuit board is actually running at five volts and the I2C communication is happening at five volts. That way um, there's less interference uh, across the, the wire between uh, the two circuit boards. And then if we keep moving around, we've got a buzzer. Uh, I was playing around with the speaker before because uh, I wanted to do like little jingles and that sort of thing um, based on, you know, if your kiln finished firing or if there's an error and that sort of thing. But it just wasn't loud enough. Um, you know, one of the big things that I want people to be able to do is be able to hear this, like if it's in a loud shop and I just couldn't get it to work with the, a small piezo uh, speaker. So um, I switched back to a buzzer and that seems to be a lot louder. Um, so yeah, that's the, the, the main circuit board right here. I, I, I'm gonna 3D print like a, a case to put this in and so that you can mount this on the outside of your kiln or um, you know, on a wall somewhere. Um, closer to, to Wi-Fi. So that's the main circuit board. Let's take a look at the breakout. All right, so here's the breakout. Uh, and there's been a lot of cool changes. Um, one of the big things, let's take a look at the bottom here. We have a piece of DIN rail. Uh, and DIN rail is used for a lot of like control systems and sort of thing. Um, 
to mount uh, your electronics. The nice thing is the uh, solid state relay and the contactor both mount to it right out of the box. Uh, so I have this DIN rail that everything's connected to, and I have uh, these offset clips. And so these offset clips um, are actually from um, picture frames. So you can you can buy them for like framing and that sort of thing, but they're actually really great for what we're trying to do here, which is to separate, to, to create a heat break between the side of the outside of your kiln and the electronics that are mounted, um, you know, on the outside of it. So let's flip this over and let's just kind of walk through things. Um, so uh, along with, with heat, um, I actually had Corey do some tests with his kiln and some DIN rail and offset clips. And uh, he found that the outside of his kiln uh, on the DIN rail, it was getting up to about 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which is definitely a lot cooler than like the surface of his kiln, but it's still a little bit too warm for my liking, especially considering, you know, we have all these plastic components. I just don't want them to deform and melt over time. Uh, so by adding a fan, it's definitely going to keep things a lot cooler. Um, and so to mount this fan, the breakout PCB and this relay, I used this other circuit board that I made. It's like a little mount. Um, and I had slots in here, but I'm going to switch that to, to just straight holes. I was just using this because I was testing things out and I wasn't sure if I was going to make some revisions. So I figured putting in some slots would give me some, some play. Um, so this is mounted to the DIN rail and then all three of these parts here are, are connected to this. Uh, and they're using some brass standoffs and these are all just M3 screws. Okay, so uh, we have this fan here um, and I was playing around with a bunch of different ways of, you know, how do you mount a fan um, to this DIN rail? And what I came up with is, I think it's actually pretty clever. Uh, there's just a, a 3D printed bracket here uh, with some legs and there's um, just some screws that are coming up through this uh, mounting plate PCB and the fan just like slides onto them and it holds it pretty well. Um, and the, the default orientation for this would be, would be vertical. So um, it wouldn't, it shouldn't fall off. Um, but it makes it really easy to take off if you need to, uh, you know, do any maintenance or you know adjust some of these connections. It just kind of gets it out of the way. So along with that, um, we have this the Ethernet jack, and I, I placed it underneath. Uh, that way, you could still press down on the little um, lever here to to clip and unclip the the Ethernet cable. Uh, and then down here we have a built-in MCP uh, 9600. Um, so that's built in and here's just the K-type thermocouple that plugs in. And then uh, what I have over here are um, three plugs that you can plug in additional uh, MCP 9600s. Um, so they would just plug right in for each one. And uh, the cool thing, so I made this little module too. So this is a little breakout for the MCP 9600. And um, if you look really closely, there's an address pin here on the side. How this uh, chip works is uh, you give it a analog voltage and that's what defines its address for I2C. So, um, so what I'm doing is I actually have a voltage divider, a, a bunch of voltage dividers that, um, so each one of these modules gets its own analog um, voltage. And so because of that, we can, um, you know, talk to each one and we can detect, you know, which uh, one is plugged in, which one's not plugged in, that sort of thing. Um, and one kind of fun thing that I did with these uh, modules is I added, uh, if you didn't want to use this for PyKiln, you're just using it for some other project. Uh, one kind of handy thing that you can do with the address pin is you can set it to five volts or you can set it to ground. And then, you know, that's a really easy way to get, you know, two different addresses. So on the bottom here, I have a little um, solder jumper that you can you can put a little glob of solder on there and you can make a connection to other to either five volts or ground on the address pin so it makes it 
easier to wire up if you're doing other things. Um, but let's continue on. So we've got the built-in MCP uh, 9600, and then um, this chip right here is a MCP 23008. Um, it's a GPIO expander. So uh, then we have all of our different heating zones uh, that this chip uh, controls. There's also an auxiliary pin, and uh, the fan is also controlled through that as well. Um, and then what else do we have? There's an optional uh, read switch. So if you want to uh, add a little bit of extra safety where uh, you, you know, cut power to the heating elements when you open up the kiln, um, you can add a read switch um, and, and cut this. There's a little trace in between this, this little pad right here. Uh, you can cut that trace and then you can solder in a read switch and then um, whenever you open and close the door, there's like a little magnet, kind of like a, the, they use them in security systems for like door alarms and that sort of thing. Um, so when you open up the, the, the door to the kiln, it will cut power uh, to this relay, uh, which will cut power to the contactor. Um, what else do we have? That's about it. Um, the other thing is, the ESP32 has uh, a direct um, connection to the relay pin, uh, and that controls the relay and the contactor, which is the, the main power for your, your kiln. So uh, if you lose uh, connection over I2C, you can still turn off the kiln, which is very handy. Um, so uh, the contactor right here, uh, so, and the contactor supplies power to the coil in the, uh, or sorry, the relay supplies power to the coil and the contactor. And that way you don't have to have another power supply. They do make other, uh, contactors that use like 24 volts, uh, for the coil, but you know, it's, it's just a lot easier. You already have, you know, 120 or 110, 120 volts AC in here, you might as well just use it. Um, so it just makes it a lot simpler. And then we have the solid state relays, which are hooked up to each one of these zones and are getting power from the, the contactor. Uh, yeah, so I think that's about everything on this breakout board. Well, I hope you guys are as excited about this project as I am. As I'm developing it, I'm making sure to use inexpensive and easy to source components so that if there is a problem with your kiln, you can repair it. I believe that people should own their devices and should be free to modify and fix them. And that is why PyKiln is an open source software and hardware project. My goal is to create the best kiln controller out there. I believe that PyKiln can democratize ceramics and bring kilns into the 21st century by leveraging IoT devices, serverless systems, and modern web frameworks. If you are interested in this project, I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video so YouTube will share it with more people. If you want to stay up to date with my progress, please subscribe to this channel. If you're interested in signing up for the closed beta, I have a link to a form in the description, and I really appreciate all your support and I can't wait to see where this project takes us. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.